same people that were behind the World Trade Center were behind uh, this purported uh, almost London bombing, and that is the Vatican. And the Vatican does everything. The Jesuits rule the Vatican. The Jesuits control Prodeo or their, their intelligence community by using all the intelligence communities at their disposal. And that includes British MI5 and MI6. So, uh, again, Jerusalem's on five hills, not seven. There's no historical documentation that says they're on seven. Jerusalem, uh, Rome is on seven, full of historical documentation. And thus, Rome rules the world. And now this leads to another issue. Who rules Israel? Well, Israel is ruled by the Vatican. Israel was established by the Vatican, and the Pope's Masonic Jewish labor Zionists work with the Nazis during World War II in the ultimate creation of Masonic Jewish Zionist Israel, that was that the revision of Zionists had no hand in, and not, not any real true Jewish patriot had a hand in, or wanted to or could able to establish. And so that we see it in a book written by Ben Hecht, called perfidy that these Masonic Jewish Zionists like Chaim Weizmann and David Ben-Gurion with their agents Rudolf Kastner work together with Colonel Adolf Eichmann and Colonel Kurt Becker in the sending of 400,000 Jews to Auschwitz. That is a historical fact. And so we see the connection between the high-level SS and what later became the Masonic Jewish Zionist government of Israel uh, controlled by the Mossad. Here's the map of the world, and what I'm going to do is, first I want to light up the countries where we have military bases. There are 40, 44 of them in all. Everything you see there in red, those are the countries where the United States now has military bases. And let's show the countries where we are shooting at people or shooting at buildings, either using our planes or our drones. There are seven countries in the world where we are shooting things out of the skies. And then finally, I want to show you the countries where we have actual combat troops, boots on the ground, as we often say, soldiers, military soldiers in those countries. You could make the argument that this scenario has picked up speed with the invasion of Iraq, a country that is now completely destroyed more than you could ever imagine. When you drop the coins in the box and it makes a clinking sound, then the souls will arise from the fiery purgatory. The majority of the people in the United States have no idea that we're living off the benefits of a clandestine empire. That today there's more slavery in the world than ever before. What the Nazis and the SS and the Gestapo wore black. That's why uh, priests wear black. That's why judges wear black robes. Why do you think a judge wears a black robe? He wears a black robe because when you used to graduate from university, you wear a black robe. Why black robes? Darth Vader wears a black robe. What the hell does a black robe have to do with anything? The judges wear black robes. You know, Supreme Court judges wear black robes. Black robes represent the priesthood of the planet Saturn, the Saturnalian Brotherhood. All you need to do is study Nazism and you will begin to see that the powers behind the Nazi party, the Thule Society, the Germanian Order, were all members of something called the Saturnalian Brotherhood, the Brotherhood of Saturn. Saturn was the god of darkness, chaos, and destruction. He teaches you a lesson. He will take your life if you don't listen to him. Some of the things that they put directly onto police and military regalia, uniforms, are symbols that come directly out of dark occultism and Satanism in particular. Directly. They are putting occult symbols on these individuals. They don't just wear it as a badge like on over the heart in many cases. You know, they'll, they'll put it over the, these areas of energy within the human body. You know, one of them is the heart, so that's why a badge is worn near the heart. Or they'll put it on the front of the hat so that it's right near the, the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is where the, the morality center of a being is. So they're putting a satanic emblem that resonates with satanic energy over the part of the brain that could develop morality. There's thousands of spirit worshippers, you know, in different societies of spirit worshippers in this world. 
But he says, we are the elite. We know the real truth about the master and his angels. They had three major policies that were going to be followed. First, Lucifer says, we have to make sure that people, humans, get to believe that, uh, that Satan and his angels do not really exist. You know, Roger, that's interesting because a recent research study report that I read indicated that in a national survey, I believe it's over 75% of people mm -hmm. do not really believe in a real tangible devil. Mm -hmm. But there is one. Oh, yeah. Oh, the next thing, that the, the, the three parts policy that they had uh, adopted there, the second one was to find a way of being able to get total control of people's minds. And that would be done by taking hypnotism out of the realm of the occult and introduce it as a new science for the benefit of mankind. They felt that uh, by taking hypnotism out of the realm of the occult and introducing it as a new science for the benefit of mankind, educator, then people of capacity of great that would uh, do great things such as supposedly regress people in time to pre to former lives. And of course, after the session is over, the person would not know a thing about ancient history. And the person she talk, she or he has talked about uh, performing, you know, certain deeds, let's say, uh, three, four thousand years ago. But this was their, their strategy. Now, what this would, uh, would do for the thing is this that uh, it would create in the minds of the general public, solidly set in the mind of the general public, uh, an unwavering trust in that great deception. So now this would be a way of, of uh, de-Christianizing the Western world through the avenue of mysticism. The three things yeah. were, number one, that they did not want Satan Satan did not want the human family to think that he or his angels existed. Right. The second point that you made had to do with taking control of people's minds. That's right. The third point was what? Was to destroy the Bible without burning it. Okay. See. And what was his strategy on that? On that, um, it was very interesting. Because after the great general council, it was decided that Satan would tutor Charles Darwin personally in setting up the uh, uh, the principles of his theories of evolution. He was tutored by Lucifer himself, fallen Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was understood, Satan and his uh, spirit counselors understood that if a person was led to believe in the theory of evolution, it would, in his life, destroy completely the, the, the uh, creation week of the Bible the fall of Maine and plan of redemption. It would do away with it. Anyone that teaches a theory of evolution is considered to be a minister of a great religious system. And he said that every teacher of that theory is recognized by the spirits as a person of great value and receives a very special unction from Satan himself, giving great power to induce spiritual blindness to convince and convert three capacities. That's the boy we agreed to kill!